Okay, hello, hello, Tyler Bryden here. I hope everything's going well. Uh, continued journey of uh, topics all over the place. Uh, well, it continues today uh, with something that I find extremely uh, exciting, important, also challenging, and that is uh, a recent sort of release. Uh, I'll share the email that I had uh, received from uh, Rick Doblin himself from MAPS, the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies, a name that I continue to struggle with. Uh, I love you guys very much, but it's a tough name. I appreciate the uh, acronym of MAPS. And uh, Rick shared this email. Um, I had seen a couple posts about this earlier, and then the email had been received about a new letter um, from the Biden uh, administration's, about the Biden administration's preparations for anticipated approval uh, for MDMA-assisted therapy to treat PTSD within the next two years. And for anyone who doesn't know MAPS, uh, an amazing uh, company, let me see if I can quickly uh, pull up. Rick, Rick Doblin has a statement, so this will take me right to the site. Uh, who has been doing work, I believe, since the 80s when, you know, after this sort of a dry spell of research on psychedelics for so long after Nixon's war on drugs and, and uh, you know, the, the response to Vietnam. And there's a, a long lineage of history uh, dating back to the discovery of psychedelics, um, research done on it, treatment uh, with it, um, and ex excitingly, you know, an incredible promise for some of these substances, which was then uh, destroyed by, uh, you know, some of the, um, you know, maybe anti-war, uh, uh, you know, statements and just attitude that came and emerged through sort of the 60s and 70s uh, that then was um, shut down completely. And so a really dark age for human discovery, for understanding who we are, how we can improve our, our mental health, how we can be better versions of ourselves, and maybe how we could have changed the trajectory of the world to care about uh, different things than what we care about now. And so this is why I'm incredibly uh, passionate about, I've had my own journey uh, with mental health, um, childhood trauma, struggles, um, in some ways that, so in many ways the psychedelics helped heal, and in many ways the improper use and understanding of these substances uh, had some it's had some downstream negative effects. And so I'm passionate from both sides, which is the, the amazing benefits that can come from these um, substances and plant medicine and and treatment, and then also uh, the other side of uh, you know how important proper use of these substances is for the healing experiences that we all want to see, the recovery of people and the betterment and the wellness um, that we do hope to see with psychedelics. But Biden came through with this note uh, about um, anticipated approval. Um, MAPS has been working closely with the FDA through these clinical trials. And yes, there has been some sort of problems with certain subsects of the uh, trial throughout. I think this is messy, difficult, exploratory work that challenges a lot of uh, a lot of our beliefs of like what is traditional clinical trial what is how do you take care of someone going through something in a you know a really complex emotional state um, you know when do you give a hug versus not give a hug should touch be all these questions that have have sort of emerged through some of this treatment and have been you know really well responded to often in one case you know in many cases with a female and a male practitioner in the room with the patient with you know pre-work done before um, you know integration work dur um, during and then after the actual sessions and so a lot has been done here to make these clinical trials uh, successful um, or at least uh, accurate in the way that um, um, uh, they can be, and because of that, um, this relationships with FDA has been, you know, quite strong. And uh, now, after you know, again, decades, you know, a couple few years ago, people just did not believe that this was possible. And I think there was still even a lot of uh, sort of uh, skepticism around: is this going to move forward? And there's been nonprofits build, you know, infrastructures in this, and then now, uh, you know, uh, uh, private entities and then public entities build infrastructure and business. Uh, you know, around this entire ecosystem, uh, this treatment modality, um, what uh, businesses would classify as a market. Uh, and so there's a lot of pressure on this actually being legalized or passed through with administration support. And this is, you know, a sign that this is on its right um, path. And, you know, this doesn't mean that it's, uh, you know, just said and done. Uh, there are a lot of risks along the way. There could be something that comes out in these last trials that um, derails this or slows down the processes or raises new concerns. Um, so that's a lot of the work that's going on right now is to get this done. And MAPS has been incredibly successful, uh, both with a non, a non profit and then now a public. Uh, 
benefit corporation, $130 million raised for psychedelic and marijuana research, a lot of work specifically done with MDMA, um, with PTSD, sometimes on soldiers, sometimes uh, in, in a lot of different um, sort of ways that um, people get PTSD, get, get trauma, and then need and then that normal treatment doesn't necessarily work. So MAPS has explored that and done a fantastic job. I have a couple articles um, here. Uh, this one was actually, um, you know, a, a, an earlier one in, in February of 2021, where it seemed like AOC and some of the politicians who are, you know, relatively progressive um, in in their beliefs have pushed Biden to first of all explore this, and then now put out more of um, an uh, an official statement on predicted. Um, uh, approval of these substances. And so I do think this is an important milestone, an important step, and an indicator that it was on the right path. There have been some incredible uh, pushes in, from grassroots initiatives, from uh, you know lawyers who are, care deeply about this, as well as just people volunteering uh, in different cities across the United States, in Canada, uh, with Section 53, Theracell, nonprofit, a bunch of different people working on making this happen. And I've tried to figure out my own way to sort of contribute and, and be a part of this and I'm still sort of searching for this, trying to, trying to figure out what that looks like. But I'm really glad to see not only is this just democratic sort of a, you know, push, this is Republicans also believing in this too. And it's hard not to, when a lot of the treatment that has been done has actually been on veterans of military of police and firefighting, et cetera, et cetera, who, you know, most people who consider themselves Republicans or American or whatever they classify themselves as believe and support those people and want to see them happy and healthy. And if this is a potential uh, way to make that happen, um, then support that. And especially with the, you know, the, uh, opioid ep epidemic and all this other stuff coming on, I think, as well as the pandemic, you know, accelerating and exasperating mental health issues. I think all of this starts to make sense to more and more people. And we also sort of believe in this freedom to experiment, this freedom to, um, you know, explore um, who we are. Uh, and I think that's why all of this is sort of aggregating at once to make this uh, push happen. So, you know, email from uh, email from Rick there, statement on the actual website. So this was a big, exciting moment. And then I've got the actual um, letter here that was published, uh, which is relatively short. Um, but there is a task force that is monitoring the pro public private partnership that can address a, a myriad of complex issues. Um, around the anticipated approval of, I'm not going to say the, this word fully, but MDMA, which has been the, 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 the sort of substance used in these clinical trials um, for the treatment of depression and then uh, PTSD. And, uh, and then, you know, they're agreeing that there are too many Americans suffering from mental health and substance use issues, um, which uh, I, you know, fully the, the COVID-19 pandemic, um, and then figuring out different ways to address this crisis in a way that is practical, affordable, um, you know, that allows people to have these experiences and then continue to be fo moving forward healthy and happy and, um, and not requiring constant, uh, you know, treatment. And so this is a challenge to uh, maybe norms that people would think of and maybe Big Pharma is one of the people who maybe feels threatened by this. Um, and there's a lot of people who sort of do profit from people not being well. And uh, this is, uh, you know, I believe a step in the right direction. My concern is, again, that there's risks along these trials um, that can still uh, pop up. The other concern that I have, and the example was one of the comments in, in the threads here is that, you know, we've seen it here in Canada, but we've seen it in the U.S. a lot too, is it's just like if there's an election coming up, put this big promise on the map uh, or on the on the. Uh, you know, on that campaign and then rally people around that so that the votes come and they get, you know, continue in power. So when they say two years, that's pretty uh, ambiguous timing around the next election. So is Biden using this as, uh, you know, a, a way to gather votes? Maybe it's a good strategy, maybe it's bad, but, um, you know, we've seen where Obama said he would, you know, legalize uh, uh, marijuana federally, at least uh, that's from my assumption, and then did not follow through that with that promise. Uh, Trudeau at one point, he you know, did say that he was going to legalize marijuana federally, which he did, but he did it in not the best way. And then also didn't fall with a campaign promise about the way to vote. And so there are a lot of times that politicians, especially with elections coming up and maybe him with failing, you know, falling support, use important issues to people like this as a way to gather votes as to, um, you know, create, um, you know, excitement and support 
of it, even when maybe everything else isn't going well. And then uh, once they continue in power, they say, oh, maybe this is this is too difficult. We actually can't get this done, et cetera, et cetera. So there is some skepticism around that from some of the comments and, and what I've seen. And I have that same skepticism just in politics in general, where they have incentives to, uh, you know, sometimes delay these things uh, to continue the support or make this an issue uh, to wedge an election around or something like that. So uh, while I'm saying that, I try to be an uh, optimistic person. I try to be an uh, excited uh, person. I'm, uh, you know, that makes me, um, you know, optimistic that we are moving uh, in the right direction. But that is yet to be seen. Two years uh, is both a long time, but also a very short time, especially for Maps, who's been working on this for since the '80s for a very, very long time. And and now we're, you know, younger people are are maybe going to benefit from this, not even maybe fully comprehending the challenge that this was and how long it took to get there, the scale of these trials, how difficult it is, how expensive it is. I've been lucky and privileged enough to interact with some of these people, and I'm so glad to see them continuing to push through with some amazing people who I know just care deeply about the work that they're doing. So um, this was a little video just to summarize sort of Biden's sort of statement around a task force um, about uh, psychedelics and the adoption of MDMA for legal treatment and therapies for PTSD and uh, depression. Uh, Biden plans for this within two years, and I hope that we actually do see this come to life, this uh, come to fruition. It would be an amazing uh, move in the right direction, I believe, for the world. So uh, if you like this uh, content, you know, feel encouraged, send me a message, like, comment, subscribe, what all those things that do the algorithm stuff, but just in general, make me, you know, help me be aware that I'm on the right path, that I should continue this journey of creating. Uh, I really do appreciate every note, every comment that I get. It means the world to me. I'm incredibly excited about this stuff, and I, I, I do my best to try to create insightful, valuable videos that are covering some of the things that I, I find just important in the world today. So uh, this has been Tyler Bryden. Thank you so much for checking this out. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.